and we're recording. Hey, welcome everyone. This is uh, the Thursday seven o'clock meeting of the Joint Capital Planning Committee. I am the chair, Kathy Shane, and under the governor's orders, we will be conducting this meeting virtually rather than in person. And one of the first things I need to do is make sure that everyone who's on the committee can hear and be heard. Um, so I'm going to go, go through the faces that I can see on the screen and just call out your name and let me know whether um, your systems are working for you. Uh, so I'll start with Andy Steinberg. I'm here. Alex Lefebvre. Uh, here. Peter Demling. Peter Demling, reporting for duty. <laughs> Tammy Tamson. <laughs> Ellie, Ellie Tamson. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Tammy's here. Tammy's here. Mandy. Present. And then uh, Carrie Spitzer. Present. Okay, so that's the committee. And then Sean Magnano, who's the finance director. I'm just going to double check that you're, and then he's yeah. joining us. And he can, and Paul Bachman, who I think everyone knows. And, yeah. um, you know, just before we started the live recording, we did ask for volunteers for taking minutes, and um, Carrie volunteered. The minutes from last week's meeting are posted. Um, they're in draft and it, earlier, uh, actually last uh, year, and then again, the committee authorized me to review the and make them final. I haven't done that yet, but we're gonna be posting draft minutes and then we'll do finalized minutes. So I think we are all set up to begin. And there's we've done a change in the order of the agenda where we're going to take the resident capital request first, and we're joined by um, the team that put this request together. And Sean, maybe you can introduce this, um, if that would be okay with you. Yeah, thank you. So when we um, opened up the resident capital requests window, we received one request um, from Andra and the team, and we, it, it, we had a presentation last year. I think it's a similar request, correct? Um, and so we gave them the opportunity to come tonight to talk a little bit about that um, for the committee. And I don't know if, if you guys need anything put up on the screen. I've got the, the description if you want me to share my screen or if you have something you wanna share, um, that's fine too. How would you like to proceed? You can, you can tell us. Um, um, no, I think we'll just um, give a, our, our presentation. No, no okay. nothing on screen. And then right now the floor is yours. Awesome. Um, hi again. Good evening. Um, my name is Saha Lee. I'm a senior at Amherst Regional High School, and I've been advocating for this resident capital request since it began in I think mid 2019. Um, and we also have a new person who became involved in this project just a few months ago, if she wants to introduce herself. Um, we can't hear you. I can see you're, I can see that you're talking, Amrita. Maybe you need to get closer to the mic. At least I can't hear you. Okay, so maybe um, we'll continue. And sometimes if you have headphones and a mic, sometimes they take over if the computer mic isn't working or you have to turn the computer, the computer audio on. You may or may not have made that choice. So can we move forward and then we'll see whether we can get her with us. It shows up as muted. And now she's muted, but she wasn't <laughs> muted before Andy when she was talking. Um, Okay, um, I'll just go on a little bit uh, while Enrita figures out the techn her the technical difficulties. But um, our new person who whose mic is currently not working is Enrita Rudder, and she's a freshman at Amherst Regional High School. Um, 
So as you probably already know, we're back again um, to introduce or reintroduce our resident capital request um, that will basically determine the feasibility of installing solar systems on um, municipal sites. And um, since we've already established our town goal of achieving 100% carbon neutrality by at the latest 2050, and we have a deadline coming up, which I believe is 25% reduction by 2025, so in less than four years. Um, we just want to emphasize that it's really important that we get started on um, achieving that goal. Um, okay, if Amrita's not here, I think I'll go ahead and go a little bit into what she was going to say. Um, so we just want to emphasize again that it's really important to do um, these studies really quickly, especially since it's a study and not actually um, the actual installation of solar panels and achieving our goals. And while obviously the impacts of climate change isn't, <clears throat> isn't felt by everyone equally, it's something that will be felt by everyone to some degree if you haven't already, and it will be severe. Um, so we have to work tirelessly from this point forward if we want to turn this around. Um, so since this study was presented in 2019, we've gathered some support. Um, we've gathered, of course, uh, for example, Amrita joining us has been a show of support from um, town and town members and residents towards our proposed project. Um, and I think when Amrita comes, she'll share a little bit about her story. So I'll just go, I'll move into the next section. Um, but so I've been... Why don't you see if Amrita can get back in? Oh, I think she is in. She's Amrita. here, but her her mic is off right now, Andra. Yeah. Give it a try, Amrita. Try Amrita. Amrita. She's still she's muted right now. Yes. No, no luck. Okay, go on, Sahu. I wonder if the mic she's using is is different. Maybe she can change her mic. In the Zoom setting, um, but I'll just quickly go forwards. Um, so basically, I've been doing this project since 2019 when I was a sophomore, freshman, or sophomore or junior, and now I am a high school senior, getting ready to graduate. And unfortunately, um, we haven't quite been able to get this request approved. So um, I'm asking the committee a little bit more urgently this time for some more support and um, hopefully an approval. Um, so of course, we understand that since we first proposed this, this request that um, there haven't been any difficulties since then. And of course, there's the COVID-19 pandemic, which has put a huge strain on the entire town and its residents. And we can't not acknowledge that. Um, but we also believe that now with the new administration and we're getting ourselves on a path to recovery and this town is getting itself onto a path for reco of recovery, it's really important that the town also decides to include sustainability. <laughs> is that, is, sorry, is that me who has the mic feedback or? Uh, that happened when Amrita got back in. Oh, okay. Um, okay, I'll just finish my section really quickly and hopefully Amrita's mic will be working a little bit better. Um, so yeah, we, we just find it really important for Amherst to include sustainability, sustainability measures in its recovery plan, um, especially since 2025 and um, our 50% our carbon neutrality goal is coming up in I believe 2030, which is also fairly soon. Um, so uh, as we've kind of put things back that makes kind of things a lot more expensive, costly, and more time consuming the more we push things backwards. So um, despite some of the issues that we might be having now, it, it may be worth it to put this forwards on the uh, prioritizes on our agenda. And of course, um, we, we have heard the IPCC's 2018 report about, um, about our, our 12 year kind of window to significantly reduce carbon emissions globally. Um, if we wanna stay within our 1.8 degrees Celsius increase in global temperatures. And since um, it's really important that we begin locally and kind of build that momentum to bigger cities and states. So it's so crucial that um, Amherst is really aggressive with its plans and pushes itself as a leader of this movement. 
So with that being said, um, I'm gonna send it over to Enrita and hopefully her mic is working a little bit better. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Right. Try I to just say the prayer. Mm -hmm. What? Um, why don't you try not using your screen and see if it works better? Can you hear me better? A little bit Maybe. better. A little bit? Okay. Um, wait, so how should I just say the part that I didn't say before? Um, just like the section about kind of what your story with climate change is. Cool. Sorry. Um, okay. So students and residents in Amherst really, really do care about climate change. Um, I don't think that there's anyone my age that I've talked to that doesn't show like strong support for, for fixing this because um, I mean, we all are living with this problem and we know that it's something that we're we're inevitably gonna have to do something about. Um, yeah, and so I've been raised and like my whole life I've been living kind of in fear of climate change and most other people my age have as well. Um, and I'm sure that you guys feel that fear as well because I mean, it's just this thing that's kind of in the back of our minds constantly. Um, yeah, I'm terrified of the temperature rising, of the sea levels rising, of all the increased like natural disaster that might be coming our way soon. Um, and so, yeah, we know that COVID is probably your main concern right now, but um, it will pass and the climate change, the climate crisis won't. And so we need to be thinking long term right now. And really, since we have the means to make at least this one little change, um, we really have to take it because, yeah. <laughs> Because Thank you. Thank you very much. That, and that did come across clearly. Um, you might want to mention the amount of money you're requesting. So I, I'm going to speak to that. Okay. Um, so how did uh, you and Amrita finish? Um, uh, before I just kind of turn it over to Andrea, Amrita, do you want to say um, a little bit about the, your next part about kind of the change in administration and kind of increased support? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so because of the democratic um, shift in our government, there's going to be a lot more support for projects like these in the future. Um, so we're like in a point in our country where big positive change is really possible. And we really want to be at the forefront of that. So there's no better time than now to do things like this and be taking steps towards um, really getting it under control. Um, so before we turn it over to Andrew for some of the more technical information, um, we just want to emphasize again that this is a study and not yet the actual commitment to installing solar panels on municipal sites. And I believe that the town has already contracted a study that um, identified the middle school as a potential place for installing solar panels. And so it seems like this project has already started. And what we are requesting is now is a more um, an engineering study that would go more in depth into those potential sites and figure things out like costs and um, the process. So um, since it seems like there's already been a start, we're hoping that we'll be able to push into approving this capital request as the next step. So now to Andrea. So thank you, Amrita and Saho. Um, I just want to remind the um, everyone um, that the Energy and Climate Action Committee has endorsed the resident capital request two years in a row. And, um, and that the concept of having a resident capital um, budget is um, something that's valued, even though um, ours was the only one two years in a row. I think that having it be successful will help to um, empower other people. Um, and uh, the state, I follow very closely the state legislation that's relevant to climate and there is money that is going to be coming through. And so if we have the study done, 
then we'll be able to, um, we'll have a, a shovel ready project um, so that we can put in for, you know, the first granting period or however it ends up working. Um, so in terms of the technical specifications, the students are most interested in having a parking lot canopy um, at the middle school or high school. And um, so we emphasize that we want not only the um, initial concept and drawings, but also an engineering study um, that would go into some more details. Um, for instance, um, an analysis of the potential for um, having electric vehicle charging at 10% of the parking spaces, um, a solar canopy for an uh, EV ready bus depot for our electric bus and future electric buses, um, and uh, an analysis of costs and benefits of integrating storage and some other um, integration technology um, that's in our sort of the technical part of, of our request. Um, and that's, um, I think that Sean uh, Mangano probably has a little bit of an update on what we already know from the solar study that was a part of the consultant work that that is um, helping the ECAC do our climate plan. So Sean. Yeah, I can give a, a little update. Um, so after the presentation um, that was given last year, um, great job again tonight, great job last year. Um, uh, we had worked with Stephanie, you know, because it was a tough capital year and it wasn't able to be funded, um, but it seemed like a really good project. We were trying to figure out other ways to fund it. And so we connected with Stephanie Ciccarello, who um, does the sustainability for us. And we coincidentally, a resiliency grant um, came out from FEMA, uh, building resiliency in something, I can't remember what the, the acronym stands for, but um, uh, Stephanie put together a really strong a grant application for that program. And it's, the program's not necessarily focused on these types of studies. It's more focused on um, repairing bridges and culverts and things like that, but we wanted to give it a shot. And she submitted a really strong application and it ultimately did not get approved. However, um, there was really positive feedback from the reviewers of it, uh, which would be, I believe it was FEMA, either MEMA or FEMA. Um, there was really positive feedback and they actually connected with Stephanie about um, potentially taking that application for another grant program, um, which wouldn't it wouldn't necessarily be a, a monetary program where they give us money, but they may actually provide some of the technical expertise um, that is needed to, to execute something similar to what's in the resident capital request, doing sort of a broad look at town. Um, so that is relatively recent, that update. Um, we found out that maybe a few weeks ago. Um, and so that's sort of where we're at on that piece of it. And then on the regional side, um, for those who aren't aware, I do believe the region included, um, I can't remember the exact dollar amount, whether it was 15 or 20,000, um, some money in its capital plan for FY22 as well. Um, so there's a couple different pieces of funding that are moving forward on, on something very similar. I'm not sure if it's exact, but it's something very similar to what's in the resident capital request. I'll just clarify that um, we don't um, we, we didn't ask for the um, roofs of the um, middle school and high school to be uh, considered so that would be a good use of the 15,000 and our request is for 25,000 I forgot mm -hmm. to say that so if, if that's the conclusion of the presentation why don't we open for questions And I'm gonna, I will, Mandy Jo raised her hand. Mandy's yeah. hand. Thank you, this was this was just touched upon, um, but I, I don't know who to get more clarification on this one from though, is the, the interrelationship between 
the item that shows up on the school capital plan that said in conjunction, I, I don't know the exact wording, but it was like in conjunction with the town of Amherst funding or something um, regarding solar studies. And so the question I have for the presenters is, what's the, is the 25,000 you're asking for the total cost of everything you've proposed? Or is that a portion of the cost with the amount that was in the regional capital plan removed from the total cost. I'm trying to figure out because that one implied that it was the same sort of um, study. Well, Carrie might be able to um, clarify that a, a little more, but um, I, what it, the uh, originally the, the first year, um, the idea for the um, solar study put forward by the regional um, uh, district was to look at a very specific site um, uh, at the middle school, which um, and probably wouldn't need all of the um, 15,000, perhaps would go some distance to getting a study of the middle school roof as well. Um, so uh, it, it, it was actually, you know, not looking at the same places. <laughs> so it's in, a, you know, they, they're, they're not connected except that um, I think last year, Sean uh, suggested that it, it could be a, um, the same person studying it so it could be the I same see Paul, i see paul's hand your hand went up paul did you want to address um this question uh no, but no i just wanted to clarify that the request was for twenty thousand dollars the written request so i don't know if the applicants are changing that um, that was a typo it was 25 the year before but um, sure. So, our, so, so is it, I guess we need to, need to amend it if it's more, if it's not 20, there should be enough, just clean that up, just be clear what you were asking for. We're asking for 25. So are, are there other questions? You know, I think Mandy's question is that we, we can get back and we can get that clarified, Mandy, um, how they interact. I'm Andy's hand is up. Andy. Oh, I can see there's also a hand on the screen. That's great. Yeah. Um, so I guess the, the only thing that I would ask to follow up on is um, because last year there was no request in for the uh, region budget. And now there's a piece in the capital budget of the region uh, is the is total, you know, that, is that where the total difference comes in. I'm going to take that. Um, I don't, so I think last year it was originally in the, in their request and then they had a similar issue when, um, when the pandemic hit, I think they ended up pulling out a lot of the capital requests last year. So I don't think, I think the 25 is a standalone to, to do as much as possible. That's in the resident capital request with a focus, my understanding is a focus on the parking lots at the middle school and high school. It, and uh, a general survey with less, um, not an engineering survey of, of all possible places in the municipality. And we do have a start on that. So it, it's possible that it won't cost the, that whole amount. Um, the, because we do have at least a GIS study um, that, that's been done to identify the, the best possible spots. I'm just looking to see if there's any other questions. I don't see any. So thank you very much. Um, you know, we, we 
can get it clarified what the, exactly the 15 will be for and what this will be in addition. And I think it might be helpful since we heard that it's possible that we'll get some donated time of experts who have technical, you know, how that would weave into this might be a useful additional piece of information that we could get. So I think um, that's it. And I thank you very much. Um, and I'm glad we you could come at the beginning because um, I, I was worried of your high school students didn't want to keep you up from your Zoom classes <laughs> very late, but thank you very much. And um, we definitely appreciate the passion that's behind this. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I think we'll now go to what was the first and the major item on tonight's agenda, which is the quite impressive document that Sean sent to us. Um, and you did get it to us before this morning, which was appreciated. <laughs> I technically got it to you on Wednesday, which is when Peter asked for it. So it's- <laughs> That's four by five, Sean. Like, we'll not let you off the hook. Sorry. <laughs> not all of us are up at 10. Sorry. And for, for anyone who is listening, it has been posted as well. So, Sean, I, you know, I think it may make sense um, if everyone is agreed that Sean sort of walks us through what we have in front of us. Um, you know, I made some notes of specific questions, but to just get a, a sense, because this is a very different format that we than we've seen before. Yeah. And Paul, I don't know. Do you want me just to take it, uh, start us off or do you? Okay. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, do you all see the um, the document in front of you? Not yet. It says you've started sharing. Okay, let's, let's try that again. And unless you erased it. <laughs> Hopefully not. All right, now do you see it in front of you? Yes. Okay, um, so this is the uh, preliminary capital improvement program. It is still in draft form and it's hopefully sort of encompasses most of the, the different items that we've talked about in the past and things we wanted to pull all together into one package. Um, but I do wanna stress it is in draft form and, and we're looking for your feedback on it um, to help improve the document and we'll go from there. Um, and a couple of things uh, before we get into the, the details. So, you know, again, there's some parts of this document that are still in working form that, and I'll point those out as we go through where we're still um, making updates. It'll, it'll throughout this process and until this document, document becomes final, which really won't be until it's presented to the council at the um, beginning of May, it's gonna undergo lots of revisions. So I will point out some of the areas that are still truly in draft form and, and are gonna have further updates. Um, some of the things it does do is it, it will show you the direction that uh, the town manager is thinking about for capital. Um, it invests in areas like sustainability, um, some of the things we just talked about, you know, there's at least one line item that could potentially address some uh, the, the request we just heard. Uh, it also invests in accessibility improvements. We just had an accessibility study done, uh, completed recently. Um, and so we, we hope to make progress there. And then it invests in obviously in, in town infrastructure and some of the needs we've heard about. This section, we looked at this last time. This is really just for people who aren't um, familiar with what the charter says about the capital improvement program. It spells it out here and also the process to for the for the capital improvement program to be approved. Table of contents. Uh, so we added an introduction section to try to um, provide some context to the capital improvement program in the past. Sometimes it's just a spreadsheet with a bunch of projects listed. Um, and so this is meant to give some narrative and, and set the direction. And it also gives more information about the process, not just this process, JCPC, but sort of the larger capital process um, and where JCPC fits into it. It also has a nice huge pie chart that 
shows how the FY22 plan allocates funds across departments. And sort of as you would expect, some of the, the, the biggest areas, public works, um, schools, which would include school facilities and equipment, and then town facilities, which is the orange slice. Um, and so it's sort of as you'd expect where the major focuses of, of the capital investment are. I will point that there's a point out that there's a, uh, since I was on a participatory budget um, committee meeting earlier, uh, there is a budget feedback form and link here that uh, for the public, if anybody wants to submit feedback on this or other budget items, um, there is an online form for to do that. And there's other ways to interact, obviously, but that's one of them. So this is the timeline that we discussed last time and I haven't made any changes to it. I know, uh, except for one thing, uh, I missed a one presentation. There's one project for the assessor's office. So I added it to the, um, the last night of presentations, this little, uh, it's just a single project request for, um, so it's only 15 minutes. Um, but other than that, it's unchanged. I know we talked about potentially realigning um, some of these if people had some conflicts and making sure that they, people were able to attend the meetings that um, they wanted to make sure they were there for. But I don't. I didn't hear anything specific. So for right now, this is uh, unchanged in terms of the ones that were on there. And I was planning to send out invitations to department heads and, and Zoom links and things like that tomorrow. So if there's any request to change this, um, it would be a good thing to discuss tonight. So I'll probably spend the most time on this section here. Um, this is sort of the high level overview of the the mechanism to uh, finance capital in town. And so I'm gonna do sort of a quick walkthrough of just what each section means and make sure everybody fully understands it. And then I'll talk a little bit about the assumptions that are sort of specific to this year's uh, five-year plan. So capital funding all starts with the property tax levy. And that's what this top section is. You'll see the prior, um, prior year levy limit, uh, allowable increase for um, the two and a half percent allowable increase to the property taxes an estimate for new growth, and then a final uh, property tax levy. And so for FY21, it is actual. And then what we need to project is these out years. And so you can see actual for 21 becomes the beginning point for 22, and then so on and so on. Um, really, the, the big variable here is new growth. We usually try to be conservative in what we project for new growth. And especially for FY22, because of the pandemic, uh, delaying some things and slowing some things down. You can see it's a little more conservative than what it is in the out years. Uh, that's a number that could change. We work with the assessor's office to come up with a safe number. Um, so that it's possible that number could increase a little bit before um, the, the budget's finalized, uh, but 500 is what it was in the, the last round of um, projections for the budget. So that's where it is tonight. I just wanna make sure is, is, is the font, is the screen size Large can, enough for everyone to see. Is that, I'm, too, is that better? I think so. Okay. And then the next line where it says cash capital. So that's uh, whatever percentage is ultimately um, approved for the year that is applied to the property tax levy. So this is how much of the property tax levy gets allocated to funding capital. So for 21, we, we all know because of the pandemic, the percentage dropped way down. Um, for 22 right now, we're projecting it going back up to eight and a half percent. And then the, you can see what the out years are. And I'll talk more about what those numbers are in a second. Um, and important to note, this is based on a couple years prior. So when you try to do the math, when we do look at like the eight and a half percent, for example, it's based on the FY20 actual levy. And that's because when we do our initial round of projections, that's the only actual levy that we're, we know at that time, which would have been back in um, October, November. So we always have a couple year lag. So when you're doing the eight and a half percent, you're really looking at this number up here, the 54,963,000. Then the next few sections are the other funding sources. So debt exclusion override, if one exists, um, reserves, other, um, other sources, which could be a grant or a, a receipt reserve for appropriation fund. So you'll be happy that I use that instead of revolving fund. Um, state aid, which is mostly chapter 90 money. 
And then the next section is borrowings. So this section doesn't actually affect the calculation of whether we're over or under funding. It just uh, summarizes what projects for that particular year we are saying will be a, a, a borrowed for essentially not paid outright. And this does influence our projected debt that you'll see in a second. So whatever we say is borrowed, we then have a debt schedule projection attached to that that feeds into our projected debt um, down below. The bottom section is around the expenditures. So we start with the debt for all the projects that are approved. And then, as I said before, this borrowing column, we include projected debt for things that um, we expect to be borrowed. And then anything that's not a borrowing or uh, anything that's not a borrowing would come would be a cash capital project, unless it's one of these other ones below, which I'll in a second. So anything that's not a grant or um, debt exclusion override. So this last section are those other sources. So, and these are usually specific to a project. So um, for debt exclusion override, it would be a specific project that was approved for that. Um, same thing for these others, that those are usually grants that are specific to a certain activity um, or a certain expenditure. And then state aid is the chapter 90 money. So that's sort of a wash. And then the last row on here is whether the plan is in balance. So the over under, so you can see for 22, it's almost balanced, but it's um, slightly over. Um, the next year a little bit more, and then it starts to even out. FY26, you'll see that there's you know, a larger chunk available, and part of that is just that's farthest out in time. And so as we move closer, that will surely be, um, will surely go down as we get closer. So I see, Sean, I see one hand is up. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to take questions as we go along? So Andy has- If, there's, if there's clarifying questions, then yeah, I think that would be- yeah. okay. this, this directly relates to this page, actually. Um, it's very simple, and that's a suggestion that you use cash capital a few too many times for different lines, in particular in the second section under uh, the, uh, where, where you have the expenditures, you have cash capital and then you have cash capital under cash capital. Yeah, too many cash right. capitals. All right. I, you know, I, will... I, think that, I think that that second use when the indented line below projected debt, um, try and think of another kind of thing. Okay. No, that's a good, that's good feedback. And I think that came up last year too, and I, I should have um, fixed it for this year, but I appreciate that. Um, okay, so then just a few points on some of the specific assumptions that are built into this. So um, we wanted to make sure that the plan this year addressed that we have these four building projects that we're thinking about. We didn't want to ignore that. Um, and so the model that was presented on Tuesday night or Tuesday afternoon, sorry, to finance committee is incorporated into this. Um, it's not to say that model is going to happen but that is one option for how the four building projects could potentially move forward. And so that's reflected here and that will be updated um, as you know, more direction comes. Uh, and so what does that mean for this? It means when you look at the debt exclusion um, sections, for example, that includes a single debt exclusion for the schools. Um, and so you'll see that there's a revenue source and an expenditure they offset. It also, me, it also impacts the percentage allocated towards capital. So you see that going up to 10.5% in the out years. And, and that's due to the model um, in order to have enough funding to maintain sufficient uh, levels of funding for ongoing capital, but also for the potentially for the debt payments for three other building projects. The 10.5% is the, is the target we were trying to get to. And then lastly, the reserves. So the model called for using some reserves to even out the years where the debt payments are the highest. And so you'll see that there's a reserve um, source of funds here. One thing I'll just note about this that's a little bit maybe confusing. For FY22, the reserve that's being suggested to support the capital plan is the capital reserve that was approved in FY21. So if, you all, if we all remember last year, one of the items was a capital reserve um, and it hasn't been touched yet or used. And so the plan, this plan assumes that we roll that forward to support the FY22 capital improvement program. And the rationale is that a lot of the projects in this year's plan were projects last year. We weren't able to do those projects last year. And so it made sense to then put that money if it's unused back into the plan to catch up. Um, and then these out years after that, that first year, these are truly from our reserves, most likely our stabilization account. So the 500,000 um, 
these different ones in the, this row here. Any other clarifying questions on this table? I'm going to keep moving on, but if everyone seems to have a handle on it. Um, I have one for, for the people who weren't there on Tuesday. Um, you might want to say this, what the implications are of if, if we try to get to 10% and then go to 10.5%, what the implications are for the operating budget. So this was... This is a this is a decision point that makes a difference for right yeah so for um, of the ledger but also for the um, piece we're not looking at which is the operating budgets yeah I won't spend much time on it but just um, I'll, I'll just point out sort of what's um, shown here which is these years where we increase the levy that goes towards capital um, from five to eight and a half percent and then really this next year eight and a half to ten percent um, those are years that could potentially put more stress on uh, the funds we have available for, for everything, essentially. Um, we don't know what the FY23 budget's gonna look like, so it's hard to say exactly, but we did run sort of a scenario um, to, to illustrate for people what that could look like. And then once you get to the 10%, then it's a sort of a, a smaller step up to 10 and a half. Um, but really this is the year where there's a big step up to get to 10. And again, all this is really just catching up to where we were before, because we were, I think we were at 10 or just about to go to 10 uh, before the pandemic hit. So most of this is just getting back um, to where we were before the pandemic. So I'm not going to go through every project, but I will note a few things as I go through this. Um, the funding source is right here. So again, if you're wondering what the proposal is for how to fund this project, it's, it's in this column here. And the, there's descriptions after this section that hopefully go in the same order as what you see here. Um, for the, they should, for the most part, go in the same order. So you can get a, a summary of each of these in the next section of the, the plan. A uh, few things on this page I will note. So these electronic vote tabulators, this, I think this was a question uh, maybe Andy asked at one point. This is specifically to, um, this is what would be needed to implement ranked choice voting. I know there's some question about the timing of when that would happen, but these are this is an updated quote of the uh, for the machines that would be needed for that. And then I had mentioned accessibility improvements. So we added to this interior exterior maintenance um, project uh, line item. Uh, it was at 150. We added 50,000 to it um, to put towards those accessibility improvements. They're not laid out yet because we still need to come up with a plan for how, you know, what are the ones that make sense to, to start with. Um, but we wanted to make sure that we started having funding in the plan to address those. Uh, another item that's noteworthy is we did put in a recurring item for energy and sustainability improvements, this 50,000. We intended for this um, to be a broad uh, sort of use item because there's so many different opportunities that arise through the year and different ways this can be used. Um, but some of the things we were envisioning would include um, some of the things like the studies we heard about um, earlier. Um, it could be used to upfit, you know, if we have a money for a vehicle, but we don't have enough to get it maybe to a hybrid or in incorporate some hybrid like elements like we did with the ambulance earlier in the year. It could be used to push it, you know, to where it needs to be. Um, it could be used to improve ventilation, uh, mechanical systems, heating and cooling systems that improve um, sustainability. So we just mostly wanted to get something in here because we know that there's, this is gonna be an ongoing challenge and that there's not gonna be a shortage of, um, of areas where we can improve. I see one hand is up, uh, Alex. Thanks, Sean, I don't know if this is a, the right time to ask the question, but on this page with facilities, mm -hmm. um, I noticed that again this year we don't have the North Amherst Library listed as a town facility. And so I just want to, it seems it should be there um, because it's a town owned facility. So I just want to point that out. So I, th I think the reason it's not there is because there's no projects currently associated with it. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, but I will note that whenever there is again, so that we make sure it shows up in the right spot. It's, it's never lived there. So that's why I just wanna make sure like when okay. it needs to go there, it does go there. But, but <laughs> yes. you're, what you're saying is that it should be, it's a town owned facility. So it should be under the, the facility yeah. section. Okay. That's just one of those quirky things that never quite made it into the right place on this. Yeah, I remember that, that plan. Um, yeah. from last two years ago, yeah. Yep. Thank you. 
All right, I'm going to keep going. I'll point out one relatively new project um, at Cracker Farm. There, there was uh, a more urgent need for some roof funding. We always had sort of the full roof replacement out a few years. Um, however, there was a portion that needed some more uh, repairs sooner than that. So this is a relatively new item that was put on this year. The schools also um, have money for accessibility improvements as well. Um, the road number, just because I know that's uh, a number that's often looked at, um, the road figure for cash capital contributions is 850,000. Um, for sidewalks, it's 200,000. And that would be in addition to the, um, the chapter 90 money. Sean, just a quick comment from me on this. The one that caught my eye was the first almost 500,000 and then the 1.8 million for North Amherst intersection. Mm -hmm. We will get that presentation when DPW comes in. Is that when that'll be scheduled? Um, that's certainly when it'll be discussed, yeah. Um, I'm sure that's a large enough project that it'll probably have its own probably standalone discussion at some point in, in the future, but we can talk about that when Guilford comes. Okay, because there's going to be a lot of interest in what's underneath those numbers. So mm -hmm. just um, just be forewarned on that. Yeah. What are we building will be the question. Right, what, are we, what, are, what are we getting for that number? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, another piece here, the town hall zoning update shows up twice. That's um, because it's it's one project, it's two different funding sources. Uh, there's a old capital article that we'll talk briefly about when we get to the old article section that is being repurposed um, to support a zoning update. So the, the total cost for the zoning update is 100,000, but the new money going towards it is only 60,000 um, because 40 is coming from an old article that's being repurposed or proposed to be repurposed. And I don't, the, just this last section, so all the vehicles we've put in one spot here um, because there's a lot of high focus on vehicles. It's been a number of years since we've replaced vehicles. So that's one of the reasons why it looks heavy. And it's because it's been two or three years since we've really done anything with vehicles. Um, it's spread across multiple departments. As you can see, it's not, it's not like there's one area where they needed it more than others. It's really spread out pretty broadly. And so I'm gonna keep moving on. These are the um, descriptions that I mentioned. We tried to highlight the projects that we felt uh, did improve um, energy efficiency or, or sustainability. Um, and so it was sort of a judgment whether or not, you know, sometimes things can indirectly do that. So uh, I welcome your feedback on that. The one question I had when I saw that is you've got this great green leaf and I didn't know whether that meant everything after that is is green or it's it's just to th that item is that correct? Yeah, it's just that item. So the okay. the the description below that item, yep. Okay. All right. So we talked a lot about how one of the ways to get our plan more balanced year to year was some things were going to have to come off that were um, that were not uh, either we couldn't afford them or required more planning um, before we could put them on there, and so that's what this list is. And I'll just highlight one of them that we added recently was the um, feasibility study improvements at Cracker Farm. Um, it was hard to try to drill down to a specific number to put there to, to keep on people's radar. So I put the range of what was came out of that feasibility study. And the one thing I, I put a note here that I just want to say is that we there are some elements of that that are already incorporated into the plan above, um, such as the, the full roof replacement and there's some HVAC improvements. So this is more just to keep it on people's radar. There's still decisions to be made about um, with the school project about whether what that would look like essentially. Um, but I just wanted to point that out. So 
this table is around asset maintenance and how much we spend um, to keep our buildings running up and going and same thing with our vehicles. It, it always existed. It was, um, or at least the building section always existed. It was in our budget document. And it seemed like maybe this was a, a better spot for it when we talk about capital and, and sort of what is the cost to maintain the capital once something's approved. This is a, a high level summary by building of the utility consumption. I think, uh, Tamsin, do you have a question? Yeah, I'm just I'm just looking at hands not up, but maybe there's hands up um, physically. Uh, I think you're muted. And Mandy's hand is now up. The mute button's still on. One thing I'll note while we're waiting is that I missed a square footage for Southeast campus. So I will clean that up. Okay, I, I think she's saying, let's go to Mandy because it's, okay. oh, okay. I've got it. Oh, you got uh, it. Okay. I have a real issue with the use of Munson Memorial Library. I think people get confused and they think it's just a library. And I think it ought to be just Munson Building okay. because the library occupies less than half of the building. And I think people get misled thinking that's just entirely the, just the library you're talking about or the whole building is the library. People who aren't familiar with South Amherst. So all along, you use Munson, you use Munson Library, you use Munson Memorial Library. I think we need to be consistent and say Munson Building, because it is the Munson Building that the town owns. The library pays rent, to, you know, nominal amount, but pays rent for the part of the uh, the Munson Building they occupy. Yeah, so, no, we can we can absolutely make that change. Okay, good. Because yeah. it, it, I went through and it's called different things in different places, and I think we need to be consistent. Because somebody could look at that and think, oh, well, the, the Munson Library is getting a new HVAC system. How come, you know, um, and it isn't, it's the entire building. So I'd yeah. like that. Yeah, thanks. No, I'll be I, honest, Munson Building doesn't sound as nice, but we can make that change. It could be Munson Memorial Building. I mean, okay. that's what it's called <laughs> with the trustees, because I went and looked up. I mean, it is the Munson Memorial Building and okay. the trustees. So that's better. I, I don't know. Okay, yeah. so I see. Mandy, then Peter, then Alex. I think that's the order. Yeah. So I, I actually thought Tammy was going to do my question, but she didn't. North Amherst Library isn't on this. And I noticed that's where Alex is going to cover it. Um, and I know not all the buildings were on this, right? Um, but the North Amherst Library, is it, I guess, was it forgotten or is it because, and, and this is where the trustees maybe can help me, who pays for those maintenance or, you know, the asset ma maintenance? Is that the trustees and that's why it might not be on here? Or um, it, is it the town? I, I just don't know why it might have been left off or why other, or how you got to these eight buildings. Yeah. You know, some work is done by the, you know, the library custodial staff, but some is done by the town. And I noticed in a, in a previous page, it is listed under the Jones Library. The Jones is listed and the Amherst, the North Amherst Library is listed under libraries when it should be a town building. Yeah, so let me, um, I'll look into why there's no North Amherst Library. It wasn't on what we've included in the past and then I'll, I'll have to dig into why we haven't included it. Whether if we don't pay the, I'll just have to look into what we pay for. I remember for years building. ago when JCPC Claire McKinnis said, no, the library, Jones owns that building. And she went back and checked and said, no, I was wrong. The town owns the building. Okay. Yeah, I'll look into that. And if we can, if we can add it, we'll add it. And then Peter. Yeah. Um, let's see. So I got these hands, I got these mute buttons. Um, Sean, if my question was on the, on the pending list. I, I don't know if you could go back to that real yeah. quick. Um, so I just want to understand what exactly this is. Is are, are these items that have been formally requested to be funded by the various department heads, or are these things that have been in generally studied and we know a cost for them? Uh, uh, the reason I ask is because of the, the Cocker Farm feasibility study improvements. 
which is, which is you know, as you see, a, a rather large number. And I just don't want to get give people the impression that that in addition to eventually asking the community to fund a large school project, we've also requested, you know, this. I mean, like, like you said, there are lots of decisions to be made and some of the items that were covered in there are already in the capital plan and whatnot, but. Right. Um, yeah, no, yeah. it's a good question. Um, I'd say that one's a little bit different than the other ones. All the other ones have um, been on, I think have been on the capital plan at one point or another. When we went back and, and met with department heads and, and said, we gotta get we gotta get the plan in balance. We wanna have a balanced plan going forward. It's that one that we can actually stick to. Um, these were the projects that sort of dropped off again, either because we could, we just no way we could afford them currently um, or they just maybe weren't at the point where we they were ready to move forward. And so working with department heads, these were ones that we were able to just pull down knowing that we didn't wanna lose sight of them because they might still be projects at some point we wanna put back up there if funding becomes available. Um, but that that's where most of this list comes from. The the last one, so talking um, with the school folks, and uh, it was it was suggested that we should at least put it on there to keep in our minds um, because it did because the school project project is moving forward and potentially one um, option of that could have significant costs for Crocker Farm. So we wanted to put it on there as a more as a keep it in people's minds. Um, but it is a little bit different than the rest of them. Yeah, I mean, I'll just be blunt. I think it's confusing because it's, it feels like this is a deferred list. Like, here's the things we're funding. Here are the things we didn't get to, but they're they're pending, right? They're about to come on the list. And, you know, I mean, I, I well, let me just be clear because it's a public meeting. You know, I, I fully support, like, maintaining Crocker Farm. But it's I just don't want to give the false impression that, that the schools have already asked for $27 million, you know, for Crocker Farm, for example, in addition to what we've, what we're going to have to be asking, you know, a number of years from now. So um, I'm, ju I'm just sensitive to that as a, as a communications point, that's all. Yeah, no, I think it's, it's a worthwhile conversation um, that we should have about, you know, what goes in there. Um, but it, it was new this year. So it's definitely, I understand why it sticks out. Alex, your hand is up too. Yeah, and I think I, Mandy Jo said what I was going to say. So on the, the North Amherst Library, um, my understanding, because I was the one who brought it to JCPC and said, hey, this is owned by town and was told no. Um, so I think the North Amherst Library, Sean, isn't on here because I think it's one of those quirky things that we had a lot of people change over um, sort of everywhere. And it's a really strange, we pay some maintenance things, we pay the operating costs of it, um, but there's a, but it's owned by town. So I think it's one of those things and Paul can tell me if he thinks otherwise, that's, I think he's probably still being fleshed out what it looks like in the future um, and, and who's paying for operating costs and things. I, I think it's probably still a gray area. Um, so I, I think it just, we need to we need to not lose sight of it, especially if work eventually gets done on it. Yeah. But but yeah, I think it's just fuzzy. Okay. All and right. Um, do you want I, to keep going? I, I just well, I have one question on um, Peter. And, that the pending. Paul's got a hand up. I don't know, Paul. Oh yeah, Paul has one up. To speak to what I was blathering on about. Yes, and, and you know, and I was going to just add, Alex. It's going to get more complicated when the when it gets renovated, and there's a community room there. Um, so I think we do, and we talked to a lot today at our public meeting or the community chat of people are like, how, how are we going to maintain it? How are we going to budget for it? All those types of things. So I think it's, those are all really valuable questions. And, um, you know, this is not supposed to be a comprehensive building list. We own a lot of smaller outbuildings for different, you know, facilities. This is just sort of at the time this was created, it was to capture the larger buildings. And I think North Amherst Library should certainly be on there as well. So thank you. Okay. And mine was a, a question just on the pending, and you don't have to go back to the list. It was more the things that aren't on the pending that used to be on the list. Should I, do we interpret it if it's not even there? It's not pending. So one that you caught my eye a couple of years ago was the senior center, mm -hmm. and it's not there anymore. Um, the other one is community fields, which we know has a large price tag on it, whoever is paying for that. So is pending, as Peter, except for that last line, is pending things that if we had a bit more money, 
we might want to do these things sooner rather than later. Is that the intention of this? So again, it's sort of a combination of that. It, that's one purpose for this list. And then another purpose is we, we might just not be ready to move forward with it. Um, not all the items are necessarily on there because they're cost prohibitive, but it might just be that like South Amherst campus basketball rec area. Um, it, it, we don't know if that makes sense at this point to put a basketball court at South Amherst campus because what's going to happen there is still to be determined. Um, so it's, again, it's a combination of whether we have sufficient funding, but also it might just be we need more time for planning. Um, the senior center one, um, I it's it's my guess is it's probably because it's not within that five year window or right now it's not projected to be within that five year window that we're looking at. Um, I can't remember where it was last time it was on there, but that's my understanding for this plan now is that it's not within that five year window. So if, if that, you know, is this, as you said, this is a draft. If, if that gets firmed up, we could put a few sentences in here toward that, you know, it's okay. not, that it, it's not that it went out to Mars. It just not, in the five-year window. Okay. Um, yeah. No. I can. I can try to figure. Maybe we can work together on how to clarify that. Um, the word. And then. Right and then take a close look at this. If if any of these are also probably not in the five-year. You know. But in any case, just to be a little bit more clearly, what how pending is pending. Okay. Um, okay. And Carrie's hand is up. Yes. Oops. But you're there. Sorry, I'm used to uh, Google. So um, I just wanted to chime in also about the Crocker Farm thing. I, I would be comfortable if if it were included, if, if it was like within 10 years or something, if it, um, but I do also feel sort of this discomfort with the suggestion that within five years, we might be asking for another nine to 27 million. So I, I, I guess I'm wondering if there's the possibility to kind of create a list of things that we'd love to fund if we had more money and things that are things that we shouldn't lose sight of because we're going to need to make sure we have room for them in the 10 year plan. You know, I, I know we're focused on trying to create a five year plan, but I think it's helpful to hold in mind the things that are kind of coming after that on the horizon because if we don't, we may borrow more that won't let us, you know, afford things like the improvements that I'm sure we're going to need to make at Crocker Farm in, in the future just because buildings age and, and, you know, there are all these unknowns related to how the town moves forward um, with the school building project. So I, it's just a suggestion. I don't know. I don't want to create a ton of work, but that might be a solution to this issue. Yeah, no, I, I'm open to changing how this is formatted. Um, one of the things I, we might want to do too is when the school school folks come and present, we might this might be one area we want to um, ask about or discuss with them is to you know, does this make sense the way it's presented? Paul, Paul's hand is up. Yes. Yeah. So I think what's important, this is all really valuable because I think one of the things the JCPC can actually contribute is what do you want this list to be? What should it be? What, what are the criteria for being on this? There are a lot of things on here that, you know, North Amherst um, uh, fire station, there's a million things that could be added to this. I think what we're trying to do in basically in response to JCPC last year, which was very valuable to say, we want a five-year realistic capital plan. And then we said, well, what do we do with all these other things? We don't want to just forget them because they don't exist. They do exist. And so I think this was our attempt to sort of capture them someplace. But I think it's not like, this is not the to-do list. There are other things that might rise to the to-do list. And so I think we we do need to work on this a little bit about what do you, because it does communicate to the public what's what's in the offing and I think there's a lot of other things out there that we have not captured here just because it didn't rise but the the Sean's mission was make a five-year realistic capital plan uh, and I think that was directly come from this group and so I appreciate that and I think it's valuable Peter yeah I, I'm sorry to I, I don't mean to belabor the point but I, I just wanted to clarify I'm I'm not at this point, I, I, I don't feel for or against spending nine to twenty-seven million dollars on the Crocker Farm feasibility study. It's just that we haven't even, like, the school committee hasn't even had one discussion about it, right? And so it doesn't even, it it shouldn't even be included in in the offing list because we haven't even thought about uh, discussed at the school committee level whether it ought to be in the offing, right? And so um, I'm not saying it should or shouldn't because we haven't had the discussion yet, and there's not a quorum of the school committee here. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's that kind of confusion. But I, I think if 
I think Sean, you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I totally get it. Mandy. Yeah, um, I think the suggestion of maybe creating two lists might be a good solution to this. One that is sort of the five year, either they're not ready, but they might be within five years and they, and if we can find the money for them, these are where we're thinking, you know, sort of that half deferred list. I wouldn't call it deferred, but um, cause some of these aren't ready, as it said, um, additional planning. And then a maybe longer term major or however we wanna define quote major projects um, that sort of tracks to maybe that facilities list that said, things about repairs that are needed, you know, that would be five or six million or more where we might need a lot of money for, um, you know, so that we don't lose track of that borrowing as we're slotting things in um, over the next couple of years, because those years will start showing up in a five-year plan eventually. And that might be also helpful to not just JCPC, but the council and the public to start thinking about big projects that might be on the horizon. You know, and I, I just wanna, I know you're gonna get to the facilities report too, Sean, but Mandy's point is there are a few there that are important buildings that were listed as being in poor condition. So, you know, it, it it's a way of, if we had that longer term list of biggies that it's, let's not forget these, um, they're, the way my life is going, five years is becoming shorter than it used to be. Um, but anyway, so, so there may okay. be a way of doing two kinds of lists. No, that's great. And no, I really appreciate every all the comments so far. All right, so I'm going to keep going. I think we talked about this, so people have the general sense. And I'll look into the different pieces that were um, the raised about this section. So the next section is status of approved projects in the past. And just a quick orientation, the project number kind of tells you what fiscal year it is. So if the, uh, this first project here was FY13, this one in particular is the one that I mentioned was being repurposed to support the zoning project. Um, so this 40,000, and it, it, was a, it was related to zoning back in FY13 when it was approved. So it made sense uh, to repurpose that one. And then you'll see the different ones. There's, there's really not that much there for older articles. A lot of them are 18, which is four years old. Um, but we did reach out to all the department heads to get a um, sort of status check. And, and pretty much all of them are either planned to be used or already contracted to be used. And when we did do this process for this year, we were able to close out a few articles as well. So it was a productive process to, to clean out some of the things that did need to be closed. So Andy and Alex's hand are both up. Are they up on this or did I miss them before? Okay, Alex, and I, I didn't see what order they came up. So I'll just do Alex then Andy or Andy then Alex, whichever <laughs> one of you. Alex was first. Okay, Alex. <laughs> so I'm gonna show my ignorance here. Um, so in the outstanding um, amounts, there is 24,000 for Puffers Pond dredging permits, which says in progress, but then in our list of pending projects that we're pushing out, one of them is dredging Puffers Pond. I'm sure that all works out. I have no idea. I just saw both of those and it just made me curious. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if Dave is available. He's here. He would probably have the best, uh, the best response to that question. Hello, thanks for that question. Um, yeah, so dredging Buffers Pond is a huge project and will take a number of years. So what we're trying to do is line up getting the permitting ready. It'll be a couple of years to permit it and then we'll see if the town actually wants to dredge it. But there's a fair bit of work that needs to be done before that with engineering uh, and permitting. So we need to figure out volumes of sediment to be removed? What's the quality of that, that sediment? Is any of it contaminated? At, and if so, at what depth? Because all of these old mill ponds have sometimes decades of, of uh, sediment built up. So that's really, it's kind of a, a preparation for, um, for dredging. I think the reality is if 
if we don't want to dredge buffers bond, it is filling in. And over the last 20, 20 years, it's filled in pretty dramatically. So it's an old built mill pond that will not last forever. So I hope that answers your question. Andy. Yeah, the, uh, I'm sort of thinking about a comment made by another counselor who's not on JCPC, who was asking about a very specific thing at one point fairly recently, which is basketball courts. I think that that was a CPA project and not uh, funded through the capital plan. But I wanted to confirm that and confirm that CPA projects um, are not included in this list, but probably ought to be reported on at some point. Yeah, CPA projects are not on this list. I don't know, Dave, do you want to give a quick update on the basketball courts as well? Because we talked about that one recently. Yeah, that's a great question, Andy. Thank you. Um, uh, again, uh, we've been working, the planning department's been working closely with, with Guilford and his staff in engineering. And um, yeah, the basketball courts at Mill River have been on our radar screen for a number of years. Um, uh, the construction or reconstruction money is um, all CPA dollars. Um, we really, we've, we've done some patching up there and some work on the, um, through the years on the cracks. Uh, and what Guilford's team really determined, is, my understanding is that um, there was a lot of subsurface water and drainage that needed to be uh, done there. So uh, last fall, all of the basketball courts were removed and we're gonna really try to do it right. Um, those were, uh, I believe, original from the 1970s uh, and they've been resurfaced, but never um, any subsurface work. So we're gonna deal with the water and the water movement under. We're also gonna expand them slightly to include uh, two full court basketball courts uh, with 10 foot baskets. And then I believe we're gonna have two eight foot baskets for young kids to use. So the project for the same price expanded a little bit, um, but we think it'll be a much better outcome. Okay, were there any other questions? Yeah, okay, I don't see any hands. So um, so again, we, we went with older than three years because we thought the focus for this particular section was really on what's out there that you know we need to stay on top of that hasn't been spent. Um, less than three years, a lot of capital projects take more than a year. Um, and so that's that was our rationale for why we thought, let's start with things that are three years and older. Um, so the things you won't see on this list is anything from FY19 or earlier, or FY19 or FY19 or FY20 essentially, because FY21 didn't have any projects approved. Before Sean moves on, I have one other question, if okay. I may. Yep. Thank you. Um, you said that in doing this process, you closed out a lot of accounts. Um, mm -hmm. Where did that money go? If it was capital, does it, you know, it didn't seem like it ended up in sort of the reserve use for capital this coming year. Did it mm -hmm. end up going into free cash? Um, or, or can you just talk a little bit about when you close out something that was specifically for capital, where it goes. Yeah, I'll give Sonia a second to see if she wants to respond to that one. And if not, I'll take a crack at it. Oh, she's unmuted. Hi. Um, yeah, we close that out. It stays in the capital um, project fund and we, um, we repurpose it with the, the 40,000 really is closed and it's part of that. In the um, Munis reports, you'll see a, a line item called control account, and that's where it sits until we kind of save that for emergencies or if we need to balance out the reports, but it's there. You know, I have all the art, a list of all the articles that have been closed that make up that amount too. Okay, so it's dedicated for capital though. It doesn't it go It is. Back. Okay. It stays that's for I'm capital. Saying. Thank you, Sonia. Yep. All right, so I'll keep going, almost done. Um, this section, I can't remember if it was from our policy manual or from the original Joint Capital Planning Committee um, document, Andy may remember, but um, this was what we talked about last time, some of the um, criteria for what is a capital project, the timing of it, the different financing sources. So this is really just sort of informational context to, to the capital 
planning process. And then the appendix is the capital inventory. So the first section is on buildings. And so one thing I wanted to note with this section, this is still being up. This is one of those sections that I mentioned before that's still being updated. Um, the basis for this was the last comprehensive facility study that we had done. Um, we, we've made some uh, adjustments to it, some put some more information in. I think there was a request for the zoning information that we put in there um, using the GIS system. And we try to make notes for where there were empty buildings um, and things of that nature. But this is definitely one of the areas that will be updated more and will change as we go forward as different facilities are evaluated um, by the facilities team. So Sean, I had a question on this and I know um, the categories came, went through the council and then the finance committee, but seeing the insured value on an empty building that we're not using. So the, I'll do the South Amherst school mm -hmm. on, of 1.2, Two million, or basically, you know, insured. Um, is there? Is it? How hard would it be to get the assessed value, the market value? You know, say that we we take a look at that and say, you know, we're not going to use it as a school again. We're not going to use it for public. We could sell it. So the insured value is probably not. I would. Uh, yeah, it may not be as useful for that. Let me let me look into um, as, if we can yeah, get that. Yeah. So it's more it's more on the empty one. So when I got down Hitchcock Center looked like we might be nearer to because I know the piece of land that that's sitting on, you know, that even the piece of land. So just some sense of we have um, this came up when we gave the E Street School to the Housing Trust Fund on what was the value that what was the value of the gift to the town, <laughs> you know, so even though it was not going through a market test. Um, so if that's and I think it just would be useful to know because maybe some of these we actually, I don't know whether we ever want to sell a piece of public land, but if it's worth a lot, we might want to think of not leaving it empty. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And no, that's a good point. And one other thing I'll just mention that's sort of not directly related, but um, one of the things I'd appreciate feedback on was one of the, the things the council asked for was information on if, if, if there's any restrictions on the building, restrictions on the use of the building. And as we started to dig into that, there's a lot of different directions you can go with restrictions on, on the building. Um, so we were gonna focus our attention for that one in particular on empty buildings, whether there are any restrictions on the empty buildings. Um, and, and I don't know if people think that's a good idea or a bad idea, but they're, they're, when we started getting into the details of different types of deed restrictions and whether something was bought with CPA funding or purchase with MSBA funding, there's a lot that could go into to different areas here. Um, and some of the records, I think it's going to be hard to, to find that information because um, some of it goes back quite a while. Okay, I think I saw it. Tammy's got her hand up, Alex and Mandy. So Tammy, what? Yeah, just, you know, you have nor the North Amherst Library under library and it should be under town. It's a town building. That's yeah. the thing that Alex brought up earlier. Yeah, I can update that. I think it's okay. meant to be like what department, um, that one in particular, but I, it's not consistent throughout. So I, I get what yeah, you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mandy. A, a couple of things. Um, to answer Sean's question, restrictions, I would go with the ones that might dictate specific uses and start with empty buildings. Or frankly, I, the one I would also include is buildings that aren't necessarily being used for town business right now like I think that's like the child care center or um, the North Amherst school you know things that are being rented to others what kind of restrictions might be on those um I have a question about insured value because some of these seemed a bit strange um for example town hall um <laughs> just just poked out at me as let it's insured for less than the bang center, which to me made no sense. Um, you know, and so I didn't know are these uh, how those insured values come about. And that's not necessarily something for JCPC, but just in looking at something for the first time, I went, where are some of these numbers coming from? And, and importance was the other one. What 
how was that decided? Because the libraries are listed as medium important instead of like high. And I seem to think like for residents, yeah. so no, how, how did you decide low, medium, high or not applicable or things like that for the importance? Yeah. Uh, so, so I didn't decide it that um, I think maybe this is a section that we want to reconsider whether it's here or not. This, this was in that uh, facility study. And I don't think it meant importance of I, th I think when it was talking about importance, it was about as like a critical piece of infrastructure um, for different, um, you know, if there was an emergency or something like that, um, you know, but I, I think there was a specific definition in that study that I can send to the group. But the, the larger question is, if it's confusing to the group, it, you know, does it belong there? Should we just pull it out? Uh, so Alex, and then I think Sonia may be responding to one of the questions that were phrased, and Paul's hand is up too, so. Yeah, I wanted to respond to the insurance values. Those are set by the insurance company, and you know how they go up a percentage every year. So the way we buy our insurance is like a blanket amount, like 30 million. So, and it's replacement value. So it, it really doesn't mean anything. Because if the building, if town hall costs more, our blanket will cover that. Okay, that, that was going to be my question. Like if town hall goes down, are we only getting three million for it? But okay. So Paul, is, it, are you, is your comment on the same topic? No, so Alex, then Paul. So um, kind of to Manny Joe's point. So my understanding, this is actually from the 2016 study. So yep in terms of conditions of buildings, right? These are, this is a five-year-old study. Um, so yes. And then also I was gonna echo Tammy's comment about the library being put into the town department. Um, I, and, and I think the importance, like, I don't think it's, yeah. I mean, I guess we have to decide if we're gonna make decisions around capital based on this good, fair, poor, as opposed to low, medium, high. So, you know, if we've got, five or 10 buildings that have poor, like what's the next level of then deciding? And maybe that's what the importance was for. But I think it, I think there is something to be said for having maybe like a secondary way of looking at the different buildings. Um, and I assume condition includes, it's all of infrastructure, right? Whether it's, you know, the roof leaking versus the HVAC systems, right? I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's a formula for what this yeah, looks like. Yeah, there's a very detailed, if you, uh, I suggest if, if anybody has time, they want to look at it. Yeah, there's a very detailed mathematical uh, formula for how it was, used, how it was calculated. But, but I, I would ask that instead of having updated 128.21, we perhaps not have that on there because it makes it look like, right, I understand no, I why agree. you have it up there, but these are yeah. actually 2016 figures and I think it can be, in a time when we we're looking at four capital improvement projects, I think having uh, five-year-old data is not helping inform the public at this point in a public document. Yeah. Yep, I can try to update, make that clear. Okay, Paul? Yeah, so I just want to bring some context. So this is a giant leap forward, what we've, what our finance department has done. Uh, Sean led, but you know, Sonia has put a ton of work into this in her team. I don't think, you know, this is, this is presenting this in this part of this pr uh, program is new. And I think we can, you know, pick at this a lot. And it, it was more like, are we getting all the elements to a, to an informed capital plan into one document? And I think that's what we should be focused on. And I think each one of these, and I don't think we have the bandwidth to really dig into this thing right now, next year, and when we bring this back, it'll be refined and much more and much stronger. Our facility staff will have had a more opportunity. We have a great facilities director now. Uh, he'll have had some chance to dig in more into the buildings to really do this. He's, he's itching to get his hands on it, but we've got him running a vaccination set site and we've got him re re refitting buildings. So, and redoing election sites. So, you know, I just, I just asked the committee to like say, this looks good, work to be done at a later date. That's where I think we stand on this one. Well, and I'll just, um, I took notes on that and I agree, Paul. I was just thinking that what we may want to do is put it into a separate document and write those words that you just said. As you know, this was beginning, it was heroic effort and we're going to be maintained, you know, so that the rest of the world doesn't do what we started to do and say, how come this number, how, you know, we can, we can put it in a context. Yeah. 
All right, I will keep going and we're almost done. One last section on the vehicles. So I wanna thank all the departments because um, they spent a lot of time putting this list together. There's a few odds and ends that we still gotta get in here, but this has the different departments, the make and model, um, I believe all the criteria that was asked for, um, the condition, how often it's used and so on. And again, this is, as Paul said, this is one of those things where it, it has a lot of information. And as we do it more than, you know, as we do it next year and the year after, the, the consistency across departments with how things are labeled and things like that will get better and better. Um, some people for like estimated remaining useful life want, want with years and some people want miles and, and things of that nature. So that'll get more consistent as we go. And that is about it. So, okay. So, welcome there, any remaining questions. There are three hands up, um, and I'm sorry, but I didn't see the order they came up in. So I'll just start. It's I see Peter, Alex, and Mandy. So let's just do that order. Yeah. So just a couple of brief comments. If we could, if we could get at least the project list um, in an Excel sheet format, Sean, that would be for those of us that like to geek out on filtering and sorting and comparing and aggregating and whatnot. I mean, I know we all like to do that, but um, that would be that would be helpful. Um, and I just wanted to echo Paul's comment. Um, this, this is a, a significant leap forward from what we've seen in past years. I find this a lot more helpful than last year. Um, and I, I think it's and specifically, it directly re responds to a lot of the feedback that we gave during our committee last year. So this wasn't just people worked really hard. They listened to, to what we asked for. Um, so that being said, I think you should expect a continued cavalcade of constructive criticism because that's sure. what we're here for. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it certainly should not be lost that, that this does re represent a tremendous effort from a lot of municipal employees who are otherwise very strained during a crisis and um, it is appreciated. So Mandy. Yeah, um, here, here comes some of the constructive criticism, but I must say when I got this today and was reading it this morning, I was just, flabbergasted at how fantastic the presentation is, um, knowing that that you're still working on it in terms of helping me understand capital and all. Um, it was almost impossible to cross check between the capital improvement program five year plan vehicle plan with this list because we're missing the numbers. <laughs> you know, that vehicle number 73 or whatever, this, this page I guess, I don't know whether you deleted that column or hid that column, but I couldn't go from the vehicle list on the capital improvement plan on like page 10 or wherever that is Yeah. to this. Um, yeah, well, let me, one thing I can do is, um, let me see if I can add that back in. I don't know if it was consistent for every department, um, but let me see if I can add that back in or at a minimum, we, I can highlight the vehicles here yeah. that are slated to be replaced. Um, cause we did make that notation in the workbook. So we, we can highlight those, um, yeah. which will probably be helpful. That would be very helpful because I wasn't sure which ones to actually look at right. <laughs> for replacement numbers. So oh, Alex. So first mea culpa, this truly is, it's, it's really, really a great document and, and, and um, miles above, you know, like it, it makes it makes it it makes it much easier to do our job and, and see the information. So I do appreciate all the work. Sorry, I'm a I'm a dive straight in and 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 make comments kind of gal. So I apologize for that aspect of my personality. Um, so the library has a vehicle, but it's a town owned vehicle, and I know one of our future requests is for replacement of a plow. So I don't know how if you guys at this point I don't know whether to put it under town department or library department and maybe once the vehicle numbers or the highlights go in right. so um I just didn't know which vehicle here was ours that we were asking for the replacement in a couple of years um yeah. and if I don't know I figure nobody else knows <laughs> so I just I just put that comment out there um I, I don't know how you guys want to deal with it since it's technically town but yeah. maybe they're all technically town I don't know <laughs> I think I think one of the takeaways of doing this process that I think we've all talked about before as well as um, a long-term goal is to find a better system for managing our vehicles and coding our vehicles and keeping track of all this information. So, um, so that is a long-term goal that it will help departments out a lot too, if we can have a better 
automated system for tracking these things. So we'll keep working on that. But to your library uh, vehicle question, I'll look into that. So I'm not, I'm not seeing any other, um, no, I don't see any other hands up, um, any people either pressing their buttons. Um, I, so I wanna just jump in also on how much I appreciated this, um, including this list. Um, we got this list uh, last year in finance and just sort of, but it was also a how many vehicles we have and are they in use and are they being driven? And I think one of the things you said you're gonna be able to do going forward this is the first time is show us how many miles they were actually driven. So we, we've got the, we've got the baseline of how many. So you know a better sense of how long a life does it have, not just on a guesstimate life, but actually we managed to get this one to go to 100,000 miles or 150. So you're going to be able to add that in the future, correct? For the ones we own. Yeah, the intent is to add a um, going forward. The next time around, we would have. Um, sort of a starting mileage, ending mileage column. So you can see how much it's been used. Uh, the one thing I'll just say on that is I've been working with Stephanie Ciccarello around um, what she does for the Green Communities Program. And we're thinking it might make sense next year to actually do this, you know, uh, think about all the different needs people have. It might make sense to do this inventory in October uh, because she has to collect a lot of vehicle information for that grant program in, program in October. And what we're trying to avoid is going to department heads twice within a three month span and say, go out and you know do all, find all this information out for all your vehicles. Um, so I've got the list of what she needs. We could easily incorporate what she needs with what this has um, and have department heads do it once. So that's the only caveat is next year, we might actually push it up a little bit um, to try to uh, make sure, make it so people aren't doing it twice. That makes sense. Um, Andy. Yeah, I just want, uh, as we're getting to the conclusion, I wanted to uh, thank Sean and the entire uh, staff for having put this together. This is a tremendous improvement, having been on JCPC a number of uh, years in various capacities um, and under various eras of uh, my participation in town government. I think that this is a really valuable move forward. Um, one real minor suggestion uh, um, is that since it's a living document, um, I would suggest putting a date on the first page for each release and updating that. And uh, I noticed on one of the pages, you did have a, a revision date specific. Um, you could do that on each page as you revise it so that anybody who's looking at it knows where to go for the most recent revisions. That's a judgment call that I think you could have to make. But I really want to thank everybody who is involved in this for just a tremendous effort and a tremendous piece of work. Paul. Yeah, so, um, so a couple things on this. The feedback that we're getting is really valuable. So and I think that the the comments that the JCPC made last year really spurred and also having Sean to have the time to put into this really spurred this uh, development of this document, which is really fantastic. Um, the things we're going to need to drill it down on is sometimes mileage is an irrelevant number. It's about engine, it's about engine hours, you know, and that, that's how you, I mean, you, you wouldn't put mileage if we owned a boat, how many miles it has on it, put engine hours on it. Um, so I think there's different metrics that we'll want to in incorporate into this or maybe carbon used. I don't know what we want to put yeah. in there. Um, so I, I just think that there's a lot of things that we could, we'll want to be able to fix. Um, I think we're going to, this is going to be an incremental thing and an iterative process. And, but I think, you know, I, I appreciate what everybody said. Thank you for that. And, um, but it's also, you know, just every department had to put some, a fair amount of time into assembling this. And now that we've got this, it inspires us to go to the next step and make it better. So just thank you for that, that push. You know, I'd be curious, Paul, if people looked across and said, I had no idea you had that many vehicles, you know, <laughs> but no, I mean, it's just, it's, it's impressive that we put this together in one place where we can look at it. Um, I'm just looking, Mandy, did you have your hand up? No, or? No, I was I was agreeing with you. I looked at this and I went, wow, that's a lot of vehicles. Like, and, and I actually had some comments about that when we get to some of the vehicle stuff 
in JCPC, but, but that was one of my reactions was, oh my gosh. <laughs> And just to note that they're not all vehicles. Some of them are some of them are pieces of equipment, or lots. And in some cases, lots of them are pieces of equipment in addition to vehicles. But so I, I'm. I think um, we're coming to a conclusion. And I just want to. We do have, or we did have, attendees in the public, and see open it up for public comments if there are any. But I want to just check with the committee that we. I don't see anybody having their hand up. Okay, so we are open for public comments and I see one hand up and I'm, am I, Sean, are you in control? So can you bring it? Do, do I just click um, allow to talk? Is that what I do? Yeah, see, I don't know how to do that. I could promote to panelists. Does that promote to panelists? Okay. Yeah. It's allow to talk and then unmute, I think. Yeah. Hi, um, this is Tony Cunningham. I live on Owen Drive. And uh, firstly, I too want to thank Sean and Sonia and their team for pulling this document together. It's far more user friendly and informative than previous years. So thank you for that. I also want to applaud the high school students who presented their resident capital request for the solar study again this year. Um, in 2018, Bill Kazen and I submitted a resident capital request to fund an existing conditions survey for a future sidewalk on East Pleasant Street between Pine Street and Olympia Drive. It wasn't funded that year, but in 2019, it was funded under the DPW's transportation plan line item. However, I understand the work has not yet begun. And as yet, I don't see a line item for the construction of the East Pleasant sidewalk in a future year. Uh, the pu public works line item called sidewalks around town is insufficient for a new sidewalk project. So while there may be grant funding that could be sought, it seems prudent to plan for an allocation of town funds within the five-year plan to show North Amherst residents that the town is committed to the sidewalk project. And then separately, Andrew Rose mentioned future electric buses earlier, and I see 95,000 for a school bus in the plan for this year. Am I right in assuming that's a diesel or gasoline bus and not an electric bus because of the price? And if so, I'm wondering why is that? Thank you. So I think since we're not going to be responding right now, we're taking notes on that. Um, and certainly the bus question can come up. And when we're going back and actually going department by department, the future pending and what line items we've included in the future. Thank you for the comments. Um, the other panelist does not have her hand up. So I think, I mean, the attendee. So I think um, unless anyone has late breaking the 48 hour, something they want to bring up, I think we've finished with tonight's um, meeting. Am I correct? Yeah, I just wanted to check. Is everyone good with the schedule as presented? Um... Carrie has her hand up. Sorry, I have two questions. Yes, um, the good news is the school committee has canceled our Thursday, future Thursday meeting that I thought was gonna happen on the 25th. So no conflicts, at least for me um, in the future. Second question was with these um, minutes, do I just email them to you, um, Kathy, or? Yeah, you can email them to Kathy or I. Okay, yeah. I'll send them to you both. And you yeah, and, and we'll, we'll make sure we post post them as draft if I don't get around to looking at them to post them as final, just so if people, and we have, everyone should know the town is getting excellent at posting the videos. We are recording these meetings. So um, if, if it gets posted, one of the things I do can do when I finalize the minutes, I can put the link up at top to the video. So if people wanna go back and get more information from the actual meeting. So it makes them um, a fuller record. Can't always do that because we don't always have it posted yet, but we, um, when we do, we can. So um, I, I'll take a, um, does anyone want to make a motion to adjourn? I think Alex has our hand up. Uh, Alex? You're muted, Alex. Pesky Zoom. Um, <laughs> Uh, next week, the library is presenting and is scheduled for 30 minutes. Um, 
we don't have any requests. We have the plow we've asked for previously in 23 and we have library IT we ask for every year. So is there something else that the committee wants to talk about that our library director should be prepared for? Or is it safe to assume that's gonna be a really quick, not 30 minute conversation? Sean? Um, I think it could be really quick because you're right, there's no <laughs> projects there. Um, so it could be quick. I, I could imagine we can also ask some of the other questions around the library, the other library buildings um, that came up tonight. Okay. okay. So, so there might be quite, I just want to make sure that, that, that she's prepared because we don't uh, yeah, really I don't have think, any capital requests. There's, and, there's not a presentation really to be made because there's no, so it's really just going to be questions. So it depends <laughs> how, how much time people have, how many questions people have and um, on the okay. library building. And so because the capital projects are out of our purview, I, specifically have said that we're not be likely talking about that. So I just don't want to be misleading uh, the library director in that sense in terms of, um, so I just want to make sure I'm properly, <laughs> Tammy and I have, have, have relayed properly. So she's prepared for any questions you might have. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. also, I mean, next Monday is, is our presentation right. to the town yes. council. Yes. So um, I can't see that, that we really ought to be spending a lot of time uh, repeating um, what is discussed on Monday. So, so a question to the group is: Do do we want the library? Since there are no library projects for FY22, I guess the questions would: um, Do you want a library presentation? We wanted to include a spot in case there was something to share or if people had questions. But I agree, since there's a library specific meeting next week, um, Kathy, I'd look to you. Do you have anything from of? Uh, other meetings that could be moved into a slot so we can use that time more productively that's ready? Yeah, we could push. Um, I can work with other departments, some of the smaller ones, and see if somebody wants to move up for next I mean, week. we're happy to come. I just want to make the best use of everybody's time, mm -hmm. you know, because we don't have any requests. <laughs> Again. Yeah, I mean, the only request is the IT, the library portion of the IT, but that's... Right. And, the, and the plan for that, would it, it would be discussed during the IT. Yeah. Um, time okay so so you can get back to them sean but it, yeah. it makes sense to me not to uh try to fill a half hour if there okay. isn't a half hour worth of discussion to fill it with um we could all use the time to focus on something we do not need to talk about and then maybe some of these other discussions will be long we can allow more time for them uh, looking yep. that sounds good Okay, so sorry, I didn't see your hand up, Alex. I had my thing over. So now if there are any other comments, um, otherwise, is there a motion to adjourn? I think you can just declare it adjourned so we don't have to roll Okay, call. so then you don't have to make a motion, then I'm going to declare it adjourned since I don't see any hands up this time. So thank you, everyone. See you thank next you, week. Sean, very much. Thank, thank you. you.